Okay, it's exciting to be here and uh, meet some old friends, meet some new friends, and share with you something I'm working on. Uh, my coordinates are down at the bottom. So before getting into conversational AI, I'll share with you a little bit about my journey on how I got there. So I'm from Delhi, went to boarding school, went to IIT. I think like many of us, I, I had no idea what I was getting into. I picked my major based on my JE rank, got in there, graduated in EE, and I went to University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign for a master's degree, uh, where I had two life-changing events. I met my wife, and I discovered AI. Went to Yale, got a PhD there. Yale was interesting, particularly for an engineer like me to be in a liberal arts college and be surrounded with the human side of things that helped me appreciate psychology, design, philosophy. And you'll see as we go along that this played a role in my journey. <coughs> Oops. So from there, I joined academia, became a professor at Georgia Tech. I started the Cognitive Computing Lab. Uh, and the idea was to look at the human side of AI and bring technology together with cognitive science. Uh, we started, did four startups out of Georgia Tech. Two acquired, they're on the slide. Two, two failed, they're not on the slide. But it gave me the taste for driving innovation into the real world. And what I learned was that having an idea isn't enough. You have to execute on it and make it real. Came to Xerox Park. Um, I worked on mobile health. I'll show you one slide on that. Uh, and then now at Amazon. So I'll, I'll share with you a couple of these steps. Uh, at Open Study, this was a, a, a startup we founded uh, with my wife, Preeta. She's up there. She's in the audience if people want to talk to her about that. Uh, we built this site where students could come together and study together online. And when you started to see uh, this sort of hockey stick growth, I realized something really interesting. What was happening on this site was these students talking to each other, chatting with each other, helping each other in real time. They didn't want to read textbooks or look up Wikipedia pages. They wanted conversation. The same thing happened at Xerox Park. I was working on mobile health. We built a health app to help people adopt healthier lifestyles and change habits around diet and exercise. And I noticed the same thing. If you notice on, uh, down there, uh, there's a bot in these, these, this app called Fittlebot that would talk to you like as human as we could get it. And people really engage with that. People like the idea of chatting with these things. People like conversation. So fast forward to conversational AI. Here's the vision of conversational AI. For decades, we've been typing to our computers and our different kinds of machines. We have remote controls and other things we keep typing on. For the last 10 or so years, with the advent of smartphones, we've been touching and swiping and zooming and pinching, or touchscreen. And about two or three years ago, when uh, Echo launched, we suddenly had voice and mass. The technology was there earlier, but now it became mainstream. And what hit me was this, this realization that for years, we've been learning how to communicate to our with our devices, our computers, our thermostats, our VCRs, our cars, we have to learn their interfaces. Why can't we have machines learn to communicate like us? When I'm talking to you, I'm communicating with you, I'm not typing at you, I'm not touching and swiping, I'm just talking, and you're talking back. Why can't machines do that? So that's the vision of conversational AI. Uh, let me introduce Alexa, here's Alexa. People know Alexa? Alexa, introduce yourself. I'm Alexa and I'm designed around your voice. I can provide information, music, news, weather, and more. So Alexa is this agent that sort of lives in the cloud, is with you. It's not in your phone. It's, it just sort of lives there in your house or your car or wherever. And we'll get into that. Uh, and basically does everything for you. She plays music, will read you books, manages your shopping, sets alarms and timers, um, uh, gives you information, weather, traffic local information, answers any kind of questions, controls your house, turns off your lights, locks your doors. In fact, there are now 14,000 skills developed by third parties. She'll get order pizza, brew, uh, get cappuccino ready for you at your Starbucks, play games, uh, check your bank account. She does everything. So all of these things 
are done just through voice. You don't have to pull out apps or learn interfaces. To me, again, from the human side, it's much less interesting to look at what technology can do and more interesting to look at what people actually do with the technology. Right? The technology gives you all of this, but what are people actually doing? So some of the use cases, a lot of music, a lot of smart home, a lot of shopping, as you'd expect. Um, most Alexa devices are used by multiple people in a house, which is interesting. It's the first device for years, first computer for years that is not a personal computer. It's an AI. It just lives out there. And it's part of your family. It's part of your environment. And what we are seeing is that voice is becoming the new user interface. Right? You play music, your house is too hot, Alexa, turn the temperature down. Right? Um, uh, check your you know, Fitbit statistics. Lock, check if your doors are locked. Uh, set program uh, to uh, program your dish network to record a movie for you. Check what's in your fridge, your car. It's everywhere. And that completely changes the game on how you interact with it. So the vision is to have all of our world be voice enabled just like we are. And that's where we hit the roadblock. Okay? Language is hard. Language is the hardest AI problem I know. It's very surprising. It's paradoxical almost because it, we find it easy. A five-year-old can talk to us. What could be so hard about that? So let me just walk you through why language is hard. There are four key problems you have to solve, which we are working on on the Alexa team and other teams in other companies working on similar products. The first problem is figuring out what you said. So Alexa is sitting in your house. You have a bunch of friends over. They're talking. Music is playing. Somebody says, Alexa, play some pink. So Alexa now has to recognize someone speaking to her, pick up the voice, zero in, and figure out that this person wants to speak, wants uh, music played by a band called P exclamation point NK. Hard problem. Right? Figure out what do you mean. If you said, Alexa, is it hot outside? The answer is a no. What you really meant was, what's the weather like? You didn't say that. Alexa, wake me up in the morning means set, a, set an alarm. You didn't say that. People don't say what they mean. So we have to figure out what you mean to get you an answer. Here's a hard one. Let's see if people know the answer to this. Alexa, who was the president when Obama was a teenager? Richard Nixon. Ronald Reagan, Jimmy Carter, and Gerald Ford were the US presidents when Barack Obama was a teenager. So you can't just do a search on the web and find this information or look up Wikipedia somewhere. It doesn't exist. You have to understand what the question means. You have to parse out the time frame, go find the pieces of information, assemble it together into a simple sentence that sounds natural when a human hears it. And all of that has to happen in about half a second. Another question, I won't go through a demo here in the interest of time. Um, you have to keep track of what we all know. When we are talking to each other, there's a lot of shared context. So if I said, who's Barack Obama? He was the 44th president of the US. Who is his wife? I didn't ask, tell you whose wife, but we are both know we are talking about Barack. Right? When was she born? I haven't even mentioned Michelle yet, but we still know who we are talking about. Right? When was he born? Now we know it's Barack again. How do you keep track of who we are talking about and what we all know. Here's another one. People know this one? Alexa, what's 42? 42 is the answer to life, the universe, and everything. The trick is knowing what the question is. Right. This relies a lot on shared context. And if you didn't know what I was referring to, this conversation would make more sen no sense. Same with Alexa. Right? She has to know and understand the world around us like we do to communicate with us. And that's one of the hardest parts of AI in the language field. And then finally, what's an appropriate response? Alexa, should I watch Wonder Woman? Is the answer yes or no? Is the answer a movie showtime? Is it an IMDb movie rating? Are you asking, is it appropriate to watch because I'm going with my, ch with my child? Right? It's, it, the, the possibilities are, are endless. So I'm running out of time, so I'll jump over this. If this was a tech talk, actually, I'm doing a tech talk next Wednesday if people really want to get into how Alexa works in a lot more detail. Uh, so I'll jump over this. But basically, we're going to take your voice, figure out you're talking to us, stream your voice to the cloud. We don't want to listen to you if you're not talking to us. Um, put it through speech recognition, language understanding, AI, and get you an answer. And we try to do that in under a second. 
So if folks who want to play with Alexa, there are sort of three ways to get involved. Uh, people who have software, uh, apps, and other services. Uh, Alexa Skills Kit lets you build a voice interface to your app. Uh, it doesn't take six months of boot camp to learn how to do it. You can do it in a weekend. I know middle schoolers who built Alexa Skills. Uh, very easy. If you have a hardware gadget, you want to put Alexa into your own device and not have people buy Amazon's device to use it, you use the Alexa Voice Services API. And finally, for entrepreneurs, I know there are a bunch out here, we have a fund that will fund interesting voice-enabled experiences all the way from seed stage to large rounds of follow-on funding. And I'll end with my, my last slide. This is what I'm currently working on. Uh, the Alexa Prize It's a competition for university students to build a capability for Alexa to allow her to interact with you, converse with you naturally, so coherently and engagingly for 20 minutes. And there's a million dollar prize if you can cross that bar. And I hope I've convinced you that this is really hard. We have 15 teams competing on it. If you guys would like to try it, pick up your favorite Alexa drive, uh, device and say, Alexa, let's chat. And you'll be able to talk to these teams and see what they're doing. Thank you. I'll stick around. If you have questions, come find me.